بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دس ٹاک وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دی اسلامک اپروچ ٹو سسٹینیبل ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ از ویری ڈفرینٹ فرام دا ویسٹرن اپروچ وچ از ناؤ ڈومینیٹنگ دا ورلڈ ویسٹرن اپروچ از لائک اے بینڈ ایڈ بٹ اسلامک اپروچ گوز ٹو دا روٹ آف دا کاز اللہ تعالیٰ سیز دیٹ دی لینڈ اینڈ دی ارتھ اینڈ دا سی آر فیسنگ لیول آف پولوشن وچ آر تھریٹننگ دی ہسٹری تھریٹننگ دی فیوچر آف مین کائنڈ Now the Western theory says that we should continue growing but try to avoid damage to the, um, to the planet. So this is the wrong question to ask. The right question is why did this situation arise? Why are we trying to destroy the planet? And what are the fundamental causes of this problem and how can we change those things? So Allah Ta'ala provides us with the diagnosis in the Quran that the the facade has appeared on the planet because of what men have done so in order to change things we have to change men themselves to understand the root cause of the problem we have to dig deeper and this is the great transformation that occurred in european societies uh, before industrial revolution people were living with um, taking care of their own needs and they had the understanding that human life is very precious life is about developing human beings not about uh, gathering money and how do human beings develop they have been given talents in many dimensions so they can do literature philosophy they can become waliullah they can become alim they can do athletics they can do art sports and many other skills Life is not about buying and selling and making money. Now, the Industrial Revolution, which uh, occurred in England, created the capability of producing huge amounts of good far beyond what was needed. So, this is not a useful thing. Why should you produce more than what you need? But it faced the British with the problem. What to do with this all this excess? Uh, nobody needs this good, so what should we do with it? So, uh, there were um, uh, many things that were done, many changes that were made in order to accommodate the possibility of producing huge amounts of excess goods. First thing that was done was to create a consumer society so that people want to eat more and more. Now, we should be content with our uh, daily bread and minimal amount of uh, needs And this is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, that we should lead simple lives, take what we can and not try to get more and more. But the cap- consumer society, the capitalist society teaches you to want more and more. If you have a Suzuki, you should get a Toyota. If you have a small house, you should get a big house and so on. So you're always wanting more and more. And this is necessary because the capitalist society is always producing more and more goods. So it needs people who want more and more goods to be able to produce those. In all religions, cultures, philosophy, pursuit of wealth and money is undesirable. It causes damage to the character and to the soul. The Bible also says this in European cultures. But this was changed in Europe. And in the uh, 19th century, it became said that the lack of wealth is the root of all evil. So, this was also required by the uh, industrial revolution. If you have lots of goods, then you have to sell them for money. And then this money must be valuable in order for you, it to be uh, useful to you later. So, the creation of love of money was essential in uh, a capitalist society. Once people start to value money more than human beings, then you can create a labor market, which is also essential for a capitalist society. So all students in a capitalist education are trained to think that they are human resources, that their bodies are, and minds and efforts and energy are, are all for sale for money. The student is taught to think that if he earns 100,000 rupees a month, then he is doing a good job by selling himself that cheaply. So. the higher visions and goals for life where people want to change the world and the people want to change society, these are erased from minds and people are taught to think that their lives are only worth uh, selling for money. So 
once people started to value money and uh, this worldly life and pleasure and power then there was the mindset was created that you should uh, do everything for the sake of money and not worry about anything else and uh, so this is really the root cause of the uh, climate crisis that people are willing to exploit each other exploit uh, forests and lands and and oceans without worrying about what li- what is living in the ocean and what is living in the planets and who else is benefiting they all they want to grab money for themselves without any concern for others so the capitalist system is built on exploitation of all resources and the whole the only goal is to create more wealth but this, this is a limited planet you can't uh, have infinite wealth in a finite planet and so the only solution today is based on degrowth that is instead of trying to grow uh, more wealth we should try to reduce wealth try to live simpler lives and many people in the west have recognized this islamic solution conventional theories of sustainable growth are based on these three pillars the intergenerational sustainability environmental sustainability sustainability through inclusion but these are just words they cannot be implemented within a capitalist system so it's just um, not possible if you study closely what people in sustainable do- development are doing they are just trying to mitigate the damage the capitalist system is damaging the planet lives and uh, and so these these people are trying to paint a better picture of capitalism they're trying to continue the process of growth and accumulation of money in the hands of the extremely wealthy and to do to reduce the damage so much that the other people are willing to accept this they are not willing to change things they are not willing to create a revolution and islam calls for a revolution islam is actually the deen of nature deen ul fitra means nature nature means here the planet uh, the environment everything so in the west the way of life known as christianity was rejected and a new way of life called secular modernity was put in to replace uh, this uh, christianity this new deen of secular modernity is the war of all against all the powerful gets to make the rules it is a survival of the fittest and this life is a jungle uh, the, the the one with the big stick gets to make the rules this is very contrary to the islamic vision which says teaches us to live in harmony and peace with all of the creation of god other human beings animals and plants one of the key elements in the transformation which is a very important part for the um so communi- for for the sustainable development is the transformation in the idea of property rights in islam uh, property is a temporary ownership and it is a trust to us a amana allah taala has given us this and we are tested with what we have and we have to use it for public good we cannot use it for harm but in the west <clears throat> property is an absolute right owner can do whatever he pleases even if it causes social harm and so this is battle between the two concept is mentioned in the quran shaib alayhi salam taught his qaum that you cannot do whatever you want with your wealth and the qaum said what you are telling us that we uh, we have property and we can't do what we want to with it we should use it for the social good we should use it for benefit to society so this is a conflict that is ancient so now i have said that the western approach to sustainable development is not going to work because you cannot get sustainable development within a capitalist framework in fact even the concept is wrong you don't want development you want sustainable degrowth you want to get people to live simple lives you want to do anti development anyway so the uh, point is that the if the western approach does not work what does islam teach us which will work so basically islam teaches us that the climate change is created by the bad behavior of human beings uh, and so the way to change is to change ourselves and allah taala says in the holy quran that allah taala does not change the people's condition until they change their inner selves so the key is to start with our own selves and make an inner spiritual transformation
So the Bukhari starts with the hadith Inna al-amal bin niyat and we must start in the same place that we must change the goal of our lives. The value of our actions is according to our intentions. So in a capitalist system, the goal of life is to make money and we must reject this goal uh, because someone who sells himself for money is a cheap person. Instead, we must, as the Quran, uh, Allah Ta'ala asks us to sell our lives and wealth in return for the Jannah. So basically, if you want to sell your life, you should sell it to Allah Ta'ala who is the best of the buyers and uh, gives us the greatest possible reward. So the self-transformation requires spiritual growth from nafs ammara which is exactly the homo economicus of economics. Economics teaches us to be the worst kind of person, which is someone who looks only, who is selfish, greedy, only looks for his own pleasure and is driven, commanded by the pursuit of pleasure. The rational human being wants to maximize pleasure from consumption. This is completely a wrong goal. Instead, you should go progress to nafs al Instead of grabbing everything for yourself, you should try to give others. And when your nafs commands you to do something bad, then and even if you do it, you should be regretful about it. And once you start regretting your actions for which hurt others and help yourself, then you will make spiritual progress and eventually you can get to nafs al-mutma'inna. And I have uh, described this uh, process and how it affects the economy in one of my papers, which is referenced here. The key to being uh, contented is not to grab for more and more. Uh, this only, the, the more you ask from the world, the more you try to get gold, the more um, thirsty you become, the more you desire more, and you can never be fulfilled. Instead, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that we should be content with, 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 with what we have, and be grateful to Allah for the gifts that we have been given. This is the secret to happiness in life and to contentment and to richness. Allah Ta'ala has created us so that to test, to see who does the best of deeds. So we have to find out which are the deeds which are most pleasing to Allah Ta'ala. Now here there is a common problem today that people are worried about problems that they cannot affect. So what is happening in the world? What is happening in Europe? What is happening in politics, what is happening in Africa, what is happening in Russia and Ukraine, but not worried about what you, I can do. So there is a concept called the circle of concern, the things that you are worried about. And there is the circle of influence, the things that you can do something about. So the key to change is to, uh, to forget about those things which you can do nothing about. Leave them to Allah. Today we are trying to advise Allah, Oh Allah, you should do this, Oh Allah, you should do that. Forget about, leave things that are the in the power of Allah. Allah is Alim, He is Hakim, He is all-powerful. And so concern yourself with the things that you can change only. Don't be concerned about things which you cannot change. So the best of the deeds is to do service to the creation of Allah because all of the creation is like the family of God. And if we provide service to those who we can, those who are in our circle of influence, uh, we will become close to Allah. We will become beloved of Allah. The key to Islam is to build communities. First at the individual level to fill our hearts with contentment and graduate, grat gratitude, not to want things that other people have, not to be envious. Then there is the family where we should build strong ties. Silla Rahmi is very strongly emphasized in Islam. Then there's the neighborhood where we have to take care of our neighbors, 40 houses to the left and to the right. The masjid is designed to get us together five times a day. Today, only the form is left, but the reality of the masjid where people get together and get to know each other, this is missing. The, the appearance is there, but the reality is not. In the Juma, we get large groups of people. And again, the issue is, the, the point is to build a community. But today, only the appearance is there. In the Eidan, the larger community gets together, uh, the Juma Nimaz, uh, even, even the whole nation. And in the Hajj, the whole Ummah gets together. So all of these things are institutions of Islam which are designed to create unity in the Ummah. Today, we have the form of it, but we don't have the practice, the reality. So today, we can conclude with Rahgai Rasmi Azan Ruhe Bilali Narahi 
falsafa reh gaya talqeen e ghazali na rahi today we have islam only in form the shape is there but the the roof the spirit of islam is missing and the spirit of islam is what launched a revolution 14 centuries ago which created a civilization that lasted 1000 years today we don't we we are neglecting this powerful message and instead trying to uh, copy paste from west and thinking that this will solve our problems when it can never solve our problem but islam has the solution to all our problems but we are not looking for it at all so the biggest problem of the ummah today is the inferiority complex which is created by western education because in western education you learn chemistry biology physics mathematics but have you ever thought did physics ever teach you how to live your life how to behave kindly to others how to solve your spiritual problems what what good has this mathematics chemistry physics economics what good has it done for you nothing nothing at all think about your life think about what is useful for you so instead of being uh, blinded by this western education which teaches only uh, nonsense and garbage uh, recognize the value of the quran this is the uh, final message of allah taala to mankind it is complete and perfect and it gives man knowledge which we did not have recognize that this is a very precious treasure and it is far better than any knowledge that the west has gathered and learn to appreciate and implement the wisdom of quran in our own personal lives and in our social lives allah is the noor of the heavens and the earth he is the all powerful almighty and he guides towards his noor whomsoever he wishes so let us end with this dua asking allah taala for his noor to enlighten our lives and to bring light to our hearts اللهم اجعل في قلبي نورا وفي لساني نورا وفي سمعي نورا وفي بصري نورا ومن فوقي نورا ومن تحتي نورا وعن يميني نورا وعن شمالي نورا ومن امامي نورا ومن خلفي نورا اجعل في نفسي نورا وعزم لي نورا وعزم لي نورا واجعل لي نورا واجعلني نورا اللهم اعطني نورا واجعل في اسبي نورا وفي لحمي نورا وفي دمي نورا وفي شعري نورا وفي بشري نورا اللهم اجعل لي نورا في قبري ونورا في ازامي وزدني نورا وزدني نورا وزدني نورا وهب لي نورا على نور برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين